Hello ladies and gentlemen, as a guy here, bringing to you September 5th update log for Conqueror's Blade, uh, published by Porous Interactive. Now, as we expected, we kind of knew, well, again, they kind of made it very obvious that on the 19th, we're going to get the new season. We're also going to probably have this trend where... Season ends, because the season ended, um, like, midnight on the Sunday. Uh, so, the following th um, the following Wednesday is going to have the update for pre-order um, Battle Pass. And so, we've gotten a lot of information about the new season. And I'll probably walk backwards and just... Um, and bring up some information. Well, not information. Just kind of like uh, gloss over, um, kind of run over through um, some of the teasers that they put out. But yeah. Anyway, so we've got our usual eight to. Uh, oh, sorry, not our usual. We got eight to twelve thirty. So September fifth, UTC plus. Uh, sorry, September fifth, UTC plus eight for this maintenance the other server the uh just give me two seconds i forgot to bring this up come on Bah, bah, bah. There we go. Now, for those that you are, uh, for those of you that play on the Americas and the EU server, you have a separate seven to eleven September fifth UTC plus eight. So yours is going to last for four hours. Um, compensation for Frontier side is going to be ten thousand bronze coins, five hundred honor. Uh, unit metal times 25 for um, um, EU and Americas. It's 10,000 bronze coins, 400 honor, and 20 unit metals. So, again, we got that weird half hour extra, um, whether or not that truly matters. But, regardless, the main thing here, again, is going to be the pre order for the new Sanity class. We've got and I'm loving that they put everything here in just one in just one um, article. So the new event, Lionfire. So this it's going to be officially called Lionfire. So the Lionfire season is coming. Pre-order the new season pass. The new season pass will be available after maintenance on the 9th of the 5th. You can press C to purchase the season pre-order pack. Pre-order pack involves extra rewards such as treaties and battle pass EXP. It also uh, it can also unlock chivalric oath event and the new season three star unit, uh, the Rata Pistoliers. I'm not even sure if I'm saying that right. Apparently, it's supposed to be a German word, but again, I will go over this as we go through it for some more. But um, yeah, and this is, again, this is, that's a lie. I've not seen anything to suggest that you can actually use the three-star unit during the pre-order uh, part. Would be cool, but unfortunately, what they mean is that you're going to get two, I think two, um... Because it there's three sets of challenges, but it's going to basically allow you to pre um, allow you to pick up, um, allow you to instantly use the three star um, it, like unlock the three star unit when the new season starts. Now, and of course, hopefully this is big enough for everyone. You can always go to the um, article yourself. I'll be, obviously, I leave the link down below. This will go from the 5th of September after maintenance to the 19th of September before maintenance. So that's just, again, guaranteed. 
And uh, a lot of things here I can say are quite nice. There's a few things I have an issue with. Obviously, you got a breastplate versus this weird... I say weird. It's it's a nice vest. It's a nice vest. Um, it's a nice vest thing here. But it's it's what I mean is weird is that like both the female one and the male one is completely different. The horse, um, it clashes honestly with the male attire. Too much metal. If you're gonna go with this kind of attire, go with uh, less metal, more cloth. And again. It looks lovely, if you just look at the horse in the isolation. And we can see these two are the level 100, um, as far as I understand it. The... This guy, we don't see the female version, but this should be the level 1 version. Uh, level 1 skin. And surprisingly... Again, this is this is the weird thing that I will address. Well, not address, but like send my, give my comments out. But he has a breastplate, but the female one doesn't. So it's just very confusing. Now we can see all of the units that's kind of been teased so far, and it is three again. We've got the Raytar Pistoliers in the back. So these are these are mounted. Cavalry Pistoliers. We're not entirely sure, but we think there's going to be a melee cavalry. Um, there's a there's a high chance of them being special, but we think it's going to be a hybrid of uh, sword. Well, I mean, people keep saying rapier and pistolier, which is again not terribly much difference um, because rapier comes under the classification of sword but you can crucify me as much as you want I'm just going to say it's just going to be some kind of sword looking weapon plus the pistoliers cavalry so it's tier 3 cavalry we're not entirely sure whether or not um, the musketeer or uh, the cannon is going to be tier 4 or tier 5. I think the must personally I think the musketeer makes sense as a tier 4. It's going to be the first tier 4 range. Um it's going to be the first tier 4 range seasonal range unit we'll uh we've ever gotten. The Ashigaru's don't technically count. Um they're not they're not part of any season and is part of instead of a different season. I mean not different season. Is part of a is part of a different thing. Similarly, how the Mace Sergeants are not part of a technical season, even though they did come in um, during the Sengoku period. I mean, during the Sen Sengoku uh, season, same with the Ashikisaru um, Musketeers. There's no doubt in my mind that the Tier 5 has to be the canon. I mean, cool? It's very cool that they're bringing us, giving us more artillery units it's terrifying. It's going to be a cannon. Now, I think they can they can set some limitations on these things, and one of the main limitations is that I want it. To, I want them to make sure that it's a cavalry. It's counted as a cavalry unit for the purposes of supply point. So you can't pull these guys out on a, and you can't have these guys pull out, put them on the wall, and start shooting cannons at siege towers, because that's going to be a really annoying. But at the same time, you could probably just shred them off the face of the earth. I just think that if they want to avoid heartache, treat these guys like treat these guys like uh, cavalry. So you can only bring these guys out into um, bring these guys out on supply point where um, where cavalry can be brought out. So no wall supply point can bring out these cannons, and obviously don't let these things go upstairs or siege towers. Just, just fairly obvious. This gives a bit of niche to the Falcon Any Gunners, where they kind of fill in the between section. And I'm guessing, for all intent and purposes, there's going to be less cannons than there are for the Matal um, for the um, when when you're comparing it to the. Uh, 
back in any gunners, but these guys are probably going to hit hard enough where they're just going to one-shot people, and they're probably going to have a much higher piercing effect. My guess is that, like, they're going to literally just throw entire formations off the face of the earth. Like, you already got knocked down by... Knocked down and thrown by uh, the Bacchanetti Gunners. These guys... These guys are probably gonna these probably these guys are gonna probably shoot more parallel, and they're just going to shred shred right through, which, again, absolutely terrifying. Not to mention like, just the sheer range, will be terrifying. Unless they explode, that'd be even more terrifying. Exploding shells. Hope they don't do that. Um, just back to the tier tier four or I guess, the musketeer unit you can see that they have spirits on the back it could be a hybrid um musketeer pikeman unit people are guessing that um we've also seen them use uh we've also seen them use uh, sorry we've also seen the trailer which we'll see in a second but um uh, maybe i maybe i'll just leave that actually but yeah so this is the trailer So yeah, that is the trailer. So as I mentioned before, just from the trailer, there's a couple of things that like people have kind of guessed at. I'm guessing these pistoliers are going to act similarly to how Rattan Rangers work. I'm not. I'm just. I'm just kind of afraid about how much, how many times they're going to be able to shoot, and how they shoot. If they're just going to like shoot so many times from the same pistol, I'm just gonna be mad. It'd be kind of cool if like they only had a limited number of shots, but the shots. I mean, personally, I think the shots should be fairly powerful, but like having limited shots makes every shot count and stuff. But regardless of that, we also have images. We're not entirely sure, but this does look like what the unit is going to similarly look in-game. So this is kind of like a in-game render, but it's like uses a different, different, um, uses kind of like a something, something different to get lighting and things. So everything else ends up popping out a bit more. So they kind of do this weird volley stance formation plus the stakes so we're not entirely sure whether or not they're going to use the pikes which are on their back as a melee weapon or whether or not it's just there aesthetically for when they use the special ability now again this ain't guaranteed this is just this is just a guess here but again it would be cool um i think it's just unfortunate that a musket unit's going to get this i think I think any other ranged unit, I mean, I think the longbowmen should have gotten the stakes, but maybe that's too, that maybe that's too, um, 
maybe they'll never be in a situation where they'll never need to deploy stakes. But regardless, I think this is kind of cool. Depends how each of how each of the stakes are. Uh, everything comes down to like how it's actually implemented in game. I think if it's a one time. If it's like a one-time hit, where it will just deal a lot of damage, and well, where it'll eat a lot of damage to whatever collides with it, that'd be cool. And of course, um, finally finishing off with the cannon. Absolutely terrifying, watching, watching your guys just get completely shredded here. And we end off on the scene of the guy just like shell shocked. Really cool, really cool. Pre-order the new season pass, unlock chivalric, um, chivalric oath, and the new se um, new season unit for free. Yeah, all of the normal pre-order stuff. Um, by pre-ordering the Lion Fire season pass and completing the chivalric oath challenge, you will be granted um, the Rate of Pistoliers unlock um, order times two. After the new season begins on the 19th of September, you can immediately get the new season three star unit again. It's a little bit of confusion up on the top, but here it expressly states that you won't be able to use the new three star unit until the new season starts. So the rules are is that basically it tells you it tells you how to get there. So open Shrelic Earth via the O activity thing. So there'll be a um, third drop down menu where it'll tell, um, well, there'll be um, Shivalic Earth. You can unlock part of the Shivalic Earth rewards for free during the um, event. Pre ordering the new season pass allows you to unlock entire rewards. During the event, you can obtain EXP and increase your Shivalic Earth level by completing daily requests. The higher level of Shivalic Earth grants you more generous reward. The new daily request unlocks at midnight each day and is available during the event. Now, the really cool thing about this, whoever designed this pre-order or the Chivalric Oath event needs to be given a raise because it is super, super consumer friendly. The reason is that these daily requests are actually just missions unlocked each day and there's 10 of them i think there's i think there's like 10 days i think there's 10 days of daily requests unlocked so you don't have to every single day complete the challenges you can wait literally until the 10th day and do all of the challenges at once that is the cool thing. And there's a lot of repeat challenges, which is, well, there's a lot of similar challenges, and they're not very difficult. Excellent structure and design. There's no, there's no, there's no, like, oh, you have to do everything today because it's a chore. If it's a chore, no one's doing it. Maybe some people will, like, the people who are, who play Conqueror's Blade normally loves the grind. I don't think um, I don't think people I don't think people will say they'll love the grind, but I'll tell you right now, people love the grind. There's realistically no reason they wouldn't play the game without the grind, but if the grind's there, they'll definitely play the game, kind of thing. It, it, it's something to do with our monkey brains, but um, obviously the Shivalic Oath event goes from the fifth of September after maintenance to the 19th of September before maintenance and we get a glimpse of a secondary one so um, secondary promotional page where I'll tell you exactly what the pre-order gives you straight away or some teasers because it doesn't give you the unit attire straight away but again musketeer looking looking attire looks great looks great honestly i mean if i can put these on tertials pull out the rapier maybe that's going to look amazing um the rate epistoliers obviously telling us this is going to be the tier three unit and this should be the level one which we also see again here on the um on this image now again 
I don't like when the attires are the variations differ too much. There are armor pieces on the level one which are not present on the female one. For some reason, like her face also reminds me of Kira Knightley, but like it looks like there might be a custom hair with the headdress, and that could be the same for it could be the same for the male one because it has a moustache, which I do not remember seeing. Also, the hair is slightly wavy, but that could mean anything. And so, yeah. Um, this is the same image of the level 100 one, but flipped around. Again. Yeah. Unless he's left-handed. I think, I think this image is accidentally flipped around. Unless all of them are left-handed. Yeah, this is also a confusing thing. She she's also flipped the wrong way as well, unless she's left-handed. I've never never really thought about it. Don't think about it too much. <laughs> it just looks cool. Um, number three, new recall, uh, recall and recruitment event gather to beacon. Participate in the Gather to Beacon event and win plentiful rewards. Everyone can be the recruiter and receive rewards including universal payoff vouchers, treatises, and epic hero schematic crates when the recruited players finish quests. New players and returning players who are recruited will have different um, quests with rich rewards. Each account can only have one character participating in the event, and the rewards are limited to the character only. Each account can only receive the reward once. Each account can recruit up to 10 players, including returning players and new players. After the season event ends, the event item will no longer trigger any quests and all completed, uncompleted quests will be removed. Uh, required to be recruited, the account that have not logged in since 8th of the 6th, sorry, 6th of the 8th year. So that would be the 6th of August. That should have been a month ago, by the looks of it. What was that? Anyway. Um, 2024 at midnight? Or 0-hundred hours can join the Gather the Beacon event. The accounts that were created after the... Oh, after... Oh, uh, in about five minutes. So, events created um, from the 5th of September uh, starting on the 5th of December at midnight 2024, or have not created any characters can join in the recalling of the Beacon event. Event entrance. Check the details in the. Check the event. Um, check the detail in the O recommended Gather the Beacon interface. Time. Time for completing quests and claiming rewards. Okay, so it's going to straight away just give us the returning to the beacon. We got, it goes from the 5th of September to the 8th of the 10th. Which actually gives us a, gives us like, gives us like five, five weeks. That gives us like five weeks. Rewards will be distributed via, uh, Mail with a validity period. Validity. Bah. Valid. Itty. Validity. Validity. Bah. I don't know how to speak English right now. S period of 30 days and cannot be claimed if expiring. Ooh. That's. Um. Again, I don't like. I don't like anything that requires like to be claimed before expiring. But whatever. So you got the beacon, uh, got beacon points, beacon heroes, recruit, event rules, uh, beacon points obtained, and obviously you got the interface. This might be something related to... So I'm guessing this might actually be a user kind of thing? Or maybe this will be the new UI that the... Or maybe this will be the new UI thing, so that could be, a, that could be interesting. 
Um, it does look like it goes over multiple pages. So, yeah, it's extent. So they moved it across here. So these these pure spirits matches up, and you can get yeah, payoff voucher, uncommon scrolls, undetermined number of them. By the way, uh, it doesn't actually specify the number because I doubt they'd ever give you. Oh, well, they'll probably just give you one voucher. I doubt they'd ever just give you one um, mastery scroll nor treaty. Like, at least five. Maybe they'll give you one treaty. They're really stingy if they only give you one treaty. Um, but I'm guessing these are three. So there'll be one, these will be ten, these will be three. Unless they're stingy, there'll be five. Um, obviously the rest are one. So we have the Tire Treasure Rotation, Hero's Return, and the Cinder Lotus Attire. Um, Attire Treasure are now available. Hero Attire in um, Embroid... Embroidered, uh, embroidered, embroidered. I don't know why. I don't know why English is really bad right now. Um, uniform officer and legendary Nodachi attire. The Akuma's claw are now back for a limited time. Goes from fifth of September after maintenance to nineteenth um, of September before maintenance. Again, I probably already said this before. I really like. This uh, the uh, uniformed officer um, uniforms officer attire, especially the mask. But it is very similar to the Oni um, the Oniba uh, attire. That doesn't mean we can't get really cool, uh, can't re get really cool recolors. Not to mention they also probably added a bunch of things. Akuma's claw, not my favorite. I think I hate. I think I hate this one and the um, the Numenal Lion one, the mole one right now. Those are my least favorite. Ah, actually no, the Numenal Lion one and the Golden Band one are my least favorite. Followed by Thunder, th followed by the Thunderfang. Uh, sorry, the Jewel Blade one and then Akuma's claw. About half of the legendary weapons I actually do not like the looks of. Um, I only like the angelic duality just because it's the long sword. I hate everything. I hate all the visual effects because it kind of. Okay, I say I hate all the visual effects. I hate the um, I hate the 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 duality th theme of the thing. It realistically should have just been. Um, its own kind of one thing because there's just not enough there's not enough for um the the long sword to kind of have this like jewel jewel effect going and again they don't flow into each other as well as you think it does not to mention um with Sally 4 that circle I want that circle to be a hitbox. I want everything in that damn circle to just go wee. But no, I can't even hit something that's right and directly in my face. And it's just like, why? Why is this like this? I don't have it personally, but I mean, like, I get to, I have fun with it sometimes. <laughs> there are ways to have fun with the legendary, um, legendary tires, but like not on the live servers. So we have adjustments and optimization, season settlements, territory wars, and ranked battles. So after maintenance on the September 5th, there will be a season settlement for territory wars and ranked battles of the Alexander season. Please log in promptly after maintenance to claim um, the rewards after the maintenance for the new season. The rewards will expire. So yeah, you got your 14 day, you got your 14 days notice. Claim your rewards for territory wars. Um, obviously, you go into the how to say. You go into seasons, um, to the seasonal challenge F F five. Go into your campaign. Go all the way to the end. Cl claim rewards uh, for the rank battle one. Easiest way I find it is J event rank battle. Get rewards where you would see star matchmaking. Um, territory walls will remain open from the day of the season settlement to the maintenance day of the new season when military exercise will be closed instead when military exercise will be closed instead 
the time slot will remain the same. English right there is really weird. It's probably saying that they're going to probably replace Territory Wars with Military Exercise. Following the season settlement to the start of new season maintenance, rank battle will be temporarily closed. That's obvious. Rank battles aren't important if rank battles being settled. Empire tre um, Treasury Exchange reset. The exchange limit for the item in the Empire's Treasury will be reset after maintenance. Cool. Transfer. Real-time transfer system will be disabled after maintenance on... Real-time transfer system will be disabled after maintenance on September 5th. The new season transfer reservation system will be activated after maintenance on September 5th and will be disabled after maintenance of the new seasons. You can, gain, um, you can access the page through escape account service. Um, season server reservation upon successful reservation after new um, season maintenance is completed you can directly log into the target server there will be limits on the number of incoming and outgoing transfers for each server which can be viewed on the transfer um, application interface okay that's interesting so I'm hmm. okay I'm not sure about the, this real-time transfer system, whether or not they've actually kicked this in realistically. They tried it out last season. Um, I don't think it worked very well, so they had to revert back to the new season transfer reservation system. Um, but it would be cool if they had like server transfers just throughout the season. Can be a bit weird if uh, there's like server special rewards so people would just transfer through servers just for the rewards but at the same time it can be fairly expensive it will cost sovereigns to transfer servers and honestly i think they need to condense down a couple of servers the asia servers are no there's no need to have three of them right now we've lit we've we've hit a point where we could condense down two of them at the very least there only needs to be two Asian servers. There's no need to have essentially what amounts to five. If it keeps going with just new servers opening up every single time, Territory War especially is just going to get really dull because no one's participating in it. There was basically like seven battles on the last CW where everyone should be fighting. Um... So, there is optimization for the Blazing Plumes Kills Announcer optimization. Added a scroll notification for here. Oh, that is lovely. That is that is what we like to see because, well, I say like to see. What's the point of having a really cool skin if you if it doesn't show anything to the person who killed you? I mean, sorry, not person you killed. Um, person you killed or or um, to anyone else, basically. Not only do your game need to look cool, everyone else needs to see that you're looking cool. So, really cool that this that that this is happening. Again, I also think that like when when you get killed by someone, it should just flash, be like, oh, you have been killed, like, uh, killed you or something. Added a scroll notification for hero kills within the battlefield map upon reaching Blazing Plumes tier 6, if no, tier 4, Burning Heart. The special kills announcer, Roar of Flames, will be visible to all players in the battlefield. I don't like that it's so low. I think, oh, maybe, 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 maybe since this is like... Ah, yeah, rolls of flames should be higher. These are these are cooler things. That frame should be the first thing because it's trash. And this these these kinds of visual effects should be up there. Should be level seven. Should or level nine. I don't care. Oh no, there's no such thing as like level seven, level nine. <laughs> there's only six levels. Uh, but anyway, um, it's cool. Not that I'd ever get it. I've seen people have it, so people, some people are going for it. People have estimated that to max out these things probably cost you three grand. Some people are saying something like that. Um, we have, honestly, 
honestly, I have no idea how expensive it is. If you guys know how expensive that uh, the Blazing Plumes is, please tell me. Um, maybe I can convince myself in getting it. It, the male one only level one, two, four, and uh, no, five and six looks good for me. For the female one, one through four are really good. Five and six trash. Um, just from aesthetics, personally, that's how I view it. So we got bug fixes and optimization, so more optimization. Fix the issue where activating the unit training node shield bash of palace guards would result in the missing damage effect of shield bash action. Hmm. Fix the issue where activating the tr unit training node shield bash of palace guards would result in the missing damage effect of shield bash action. So something's happening with the veterancy node for palace guards where i believe this is the top line one where they get shield bash not the skill which is called for the power i believe it's for the power i hate the how it's called for the power it's such a trash name um and apparently it was missing damage so when they would use the shield bash it was not Deal damage? Missing damage effects. Or or were they supposed to have additional effects on the shield bash? Which could be interesting. Fix the issue where the health drain effect was not calculated in the combat dismount skill of the Nodachi weapon. Oh, that's hilarious! If you never, if you never healed on the combat dismount for the Nodachi weapon, when you did the combat dismount, that'd be hilarious. That that'd be hilarious. I know that, I know that you're supposed to get a stack of health drain if you hit that, but I never noticed that. Like, I wouldn't heal if I hit someone with it. Fix the issue where ballista artilleries would obstruct allies' projectile. Oh. Oh yeah, that's um, that does happen a lot. But I thought mo I thought all artillery kind of locked each other. So like, oh no, maybe that's not a, that's never been a thing. Fix the issue where the low health sound effect of heroes in the main city would not disappear. Oh yeah, that happens. So if you duel and you get to low health and the duel ends, um, you would I don't know why, but like the the screen would just stay really weird. <laughs> Fix the issue. Uh, oh, don't already read that one. Optimize the visual effect of the. Whoa! Optimize the visual effect of the weapon dance skill influence of the pole axe. That's nice. I can barely see it as it is. The fact that like it's literally on the ground, and it's just like a tiny effect. Beep! It's like a blink, and you'll miss it kind of effect. So, kind of nice. I just wish it was kind of. Well. I can't have, you can't, you can't actually, that'd be too intense, but it would be like a wave, boom, kind of like pushes us away, kind of thing. Regardless, those are the, those are the updates. Um, that's everything for the unit logs for today. We do have officially what our new season is. It's going to be 17th century guns and cannons. Going to be fun stuff. Honestly. I think I'm scared, mostly because I don't like the design of how ranged units are in this game. I want ranged units to be good. I want your ranged units to be balanced. I want ranged units to not be machine gunning everyone down as they as anyone approaches. Uh, because right now, I believe everyone doesn't like getting gunned down by range at the same time range is worthless somehow so people hate range because people don't use people can't hold people can't push with range well the fact of the matter is, is that range is so easy to kill that if they're at the front line they'll die that is a fact that will never change unless de developers change that and i definitely want developers to change that 
The other thing is, is that range cannot be strong because strong range is oppressive. Ranged units that have the adequate amount of damage to actually exist normally shoot projectiles so far away that it would take that they would be able to kill your entire unit before you can even get to them, and which is a big problem because that's actually how they're designed. They're not tough enough to actually take a hit from you. So by the time you get to them, if even one guy exists, well, I mean, you still have to get to them, but that guy technically could kill a whole bunch of units. And I've had and I've had that several times that there are some fast units that can get on top of ranged units, even even some of the meta ranged units. Um, cavalry in particular are really good at this, but the ranged units need damage so that they're not worthless. But people don't like it. And people don't like it that ranged units are so weak either because no one pushes with them. Or anyone that's using them are usually playing in such a way that it feels like they have no impact. Or the fact that, or range have no impact in the first place. So it's one of the two. This is going to be a super range heavy season because we can already assume that these units are going to be strong. They're not going to be OP. There's probably going to be plenty of limitations for the cannons. That is a guarantee. The musketeer unit will definitely be strong. Not to mention that they will have their own counter, or, own, well, basically have their own brace sticky thing against cavalry. Depending on whether or not you can leave that there and how long they last for. You could set up like anti cavalry barriers everywhere and it would be like no cavalry can get to you. Or if it's an entrenched placement, which could also be a thing. Um, still. Be tough, be tough, be tough. I'm, I'm scared. Range is just not balanced in a, it's not designed in a way that I like. And definitely I'm, I'm afraid when range is strong. It's strong only because its DPS is actually adequate. And it's happened several times in the past. There was a time where Pavis in particular were absolutely terrifying. Mostly because even if you could get on top of them, especially for heroes, they would just shield bash you off of them. And they would still maintain a very high rapid fire rate. They were actually quite mediocre, even in their own time. But everyone... But because it was so difficult to deal with when they're in their high damage mode instead of when they're in the shield mode, which should have been, uh, which should have been obvious that it was a massive bug, and I don't know why the bug wasn't fixed. So until after the season finished, but there are there are ways to fix range, and that is to make sure that you want. Well, I mean, my opinion here. I don't. I want to make range. I want to make range actually tanky. Make range actually take a hit. Give every single range. Don't care what it is. Adequate health. So everything should be brought up to 8k, very least. All of the all of the hybrid range units need their health increase anyway. They also need their com their melee combat um, abilities increase as well. Most ranged units, even if you ever seen them do melee, won't do shit for damage. For some reason, they pull out this tiny ass dagger and it literally does no damage. Or it does like 100 damage or 50 damage. I've seen it do like 50 damage. Their melee capability should be basically non-existent, but not like it is now because it shouldn't it doesn't even it doesn't technically even exist. They should be able to take a hit, and they should deal less damage at range. At extreme long ranges, they should be dealing, um, they should be dealing minimal damage, like minimal damage. The fact that you can play longbowmen's and shoot someone from like over 100 meters away, and you're dealing like two and a half k to them, that that not that's not great. That's not great. To deal to deal that amount of damage, they should only be like 30 meters away from you, maximum. 
distance firing for adequate damage shouldn't be happening. Personally, that's that's what I, how I see range. Obviously, that's how I would want to change range. Whether or not you guys want to, whether or not the de developers keep range as it is, is just another point. I think they don't. I don't think they intend to change range worryly. Uh, there's been a couple of things with cavalry that they've kind of changed, but they haven't pulled back on their abilities. So I'm pretty sure that if people kind of express their own opinions on like how to change and design units, they'll they'll do that. But it is it is an evolution in. I mean, to say right there, join the warfare revolution. This it's going to be a new. It, depending on how strong these units are, it's going to be an absolutely new battlefield because we all know that the tier five unit, which is apparently very popular in rank, um, I don't see it as often as I I don't see it as often as people make it out to be. But these the the tier four and the tier five is just going to absolutely blow these things apart. I'm not sure about the tier three. Tier three is normally not that game changing, except for like Fenris, Outriders, Condotarides. <sighs> there's been a couple. There's, there's been a couple. They're normally on the weaker side, but they don't normally care about that one performing. In the end, we'll see. We'll see in the coming two weeks what what they've got in store for us. I hope. I hope they change. I hope they definitely change the design. It was just going to be another glass cannon range, but this time I can deploy pikes. No one's going to ever deploy pikes, and people are just going to use it like they're going to use Kriegs or uh, Imperial Arquebusiers. Or not use them at all. That's a different possibility. And again, the cannon is going to be super niche. There's no way that it's not, not going to be super niche. There's no way that everyone's just going to bring out cannons and just shoot, shoot cannons at each other. Unless the area of effect and accuracy is so high, and the rate of fire is so high, that heroes can't even, can't even get on top of these guys. It would be cool to see um, how the, uh, the rate of facilities go. I do think if it's just going to be a tier 3 um, Rattan Rangers, that would be okay. But it could be terrifying if they have that, um if their range damage is as good as their melee damage, which I'm assuming is that these guys have to basically act like um, act like either the companion cavalrys in melee, and or the iron cap scouts, which means that they're either perpetually charging, or um, they'll smack you for tons of damage when they swing. Or maybe they'll shoot you for tons of damage. So there's always that one. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. But that'll be all. I hope you, uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, but other than that, my name is Azuka. Have a nice day. Bye for now.